good afternoon everybody. Excellency, respected chairs, distinguished uh, uh, members, colleagues, friends. Uh, it's a great honor and it's a complete experience being at the Dhaka University and being part of the history of Bangladesh. Today, uh, I just wanted to thank all of you for coming for this session. And I know that today is not the best day for, uh, for traveling and moving around. But in spite of the difficulties, uh, you, you made an effort to come over here. And uh, I thank all of you. Personally, as to us, and also on behalf of the partners of the Shadow I'm particularly thankful, Mr. for coming on here, Mr. Um, uh, His Excellency, Mr. Knight. And particularly because of the subject. So I can directly talk to the representative of Bangladesh government about the population issues and also about its intersection with the local issues. Before I get into my presentation, let me just present my take, take it a home message, take home message, this is a good one. Population issues in Bangladesh need to be looked up from a diplomatic point of view. So this is my message. And I just want to emphasize and I want to explain it, what you why it's important. So this is my your, your take of essay that I just just taking it of the after itself. What I want to discuss today is I will make few little remarks about the subject. I just wanted to have a little bit on what is diplomacy and what is population diplomacy. Then um, I just briefly mentioned about population change, the immediate and distant variables. And how those just are linked with probably on population diplomacy issues. And why population issues should be concerned on diplomatic issues. And how to practice population diplomacy. And few concluding remarks. So this is the spectrum of my presentation. So in my presentation, I try to explain the idea of diplomacy and what is the scope of the diplomacy and what is the potential interest for Bangladesh. So this will be the some additional points I, I hope I will be able to elaborate on this today. And before that I just wanted to explain this meeting today is, is the status series is co-hosted by DPD, Partners in Population Development, which I am the executive director. And then this year is a DPD's 20th anniversary. As part of our 20th anniversary celebration, we uh, as the secretary. As well as members of this organized various activities, this is one of the activities. Quite often being a student director, I organize meeting, not just I speak in the session. So this is for a change. I'm, I'm forced to speak by a master speak about the population development. If the partners in population development is an alliance of 36 countries, and what we call it as the intergovernmental alliance of 36 countries. And this alliance was agreed or bound by a charter of agreement of the member countries. This, this particular formation is a big unusual. You may hear about the NGOs, you must have heard about international NGOs, national NGOs, UN agencies, but you seldom hear about intergovernmental organization. Maybe some of you must have heard about SARC, that's an intergovernmental organization. PPD is the only intergovernmental organization formed by 26 countries to look at issues of population development. And also, some of them may know that Bangladesh is most of the secretary. There are very few intergovernmental organizations based in the developing countries. You may see the developing country headquarters in New York, New York, Washington, D.C., but not necessarily any of the developing countries. We keep the secretary. And we have Bangladesh government is most of this, and it's a piece of diplomatic, I would say, a diplomatic initiative which, which needs to be commented. These are some of the intellectual remarks about me. And also, PPD was formed at the International Conference on Population Development ICPD in Cairo in 1994. So, the 20 years ago, it was the International um, Convention, International Conference on ICPD. There were 119 countries attended this conference. So, they decided there's a need for development and is working together to take the issue of population issues as more seriously. Because the middle is number one, the political idea of collaboration between southern countries needs certain particular emphasis. And also many of the members have been there for 
Profitability issues should be understood or analyzed, or it should be analyzed from the experience or point of view of developing countries. So this is one of the changes behind why ICP dealers form and the people dealers form as part of the ICP. And so, before I get into the issue of population diplomacy, maybe I must just mention about diplomacy education. I am not a career diplomat. I am a, a political population science scientist. But at first, we looking at IT into the diplomatic issue because people itself is a diplomatic entity. Yeah, two ambassadors are working for us. We have an ambassador based in New York, uh, New York office. And also, we have a full fresh ambassador based in the EU office. So they are heading the victory partner, um, the office in the EU and New York. So by nature itself, we are a diplomatic entity. We are a permanent observer in the general assembly. In that capacity, our Bangladesh, our, uh, our New York ambassador, he attended all the general assembly, all the UN meetings, and he talked about population issues on behalf of the other countries, and also he had to from the uh, Dhaka University for information. He was a faculty from Dhaka University several years ago. So, people in itself, we also have a diplomatic angle or diplomatic dimension. As I mentioned earlier, we have two offices, one office in Geneva, and another office in New York. We have a regional office in Dabala. We have a program office in Shanghai, hosted by the Chinese government. And we have a liaison office in Bangkok with the uh, uh, yeah, with So this is our broader framework of PPD structure. And uh, 26 countries, they nominate the member country ministers of the, the board member. So 26 ministers are on the board. Then we have an executive committee of eight countries. So this is again the broadly I think I just want to emphasize and underline the diplomatic nature of the organization. When you talk about again diplomacy, immediately we hear about diplomacy is about the war and peace. Diplomacy is about border issues. Diplomacy is also about quite a lot of trade issues. We very very rarely hear about population diplomacy. I don't know whether many of you have heard about the concept of idea of you know, public diplomacy or population issues to be a part of diplomacy. So this itself is something which you which we are trying to explore like that. And also when you look at uh, diplomacy has to look at it in a different way. Quite often diplomacy we hear about uh, maybe the bigger countries talking about how to teach their lesson of some other countries. Mostly in the language of war, mostly in the language of aggression. But what happened to the smaller countries? What happened to developing countries? Quite often, they don't have a, a their global agenda to talk is very limited. Because when you talk about um, how to intervene in another country, how to manage development assistance you can offer, so most of the developing countries they have a, an idea deficiency comes up, totally the general assembly. But let me emphasize that I have seen the Bangladesh ambassador an extremely well performing, one of the best brilliant. Ambassador who is working and I've seen the way he's performing in the general assembly. So this is not a, a personal reflection of any of the, the best uh, foreign foreign expert or foreign cater of the Bangladesh. It's not no way of that. But I'm going to push for the idea that probably we have to expand this idea in more way. And also the idea of diplomacy is about you influencing the policies of other countries. For the benefit of your own countries, your own people. This is a disruptive process. In that point of view, if you want to improve the well-being of your own population, probably you have to work with other countries. So this is the basic principle, the basic idea behind why we should look at population diplomacy in more careful ways. Again, let me repeat, if you want to improve the health, well-being and the population issues of Bangladesh, probably you might work with other countries. I'm not going to be mentioning one country, you have to work with many other countries. Because we are really living in a fully globalized world. But then how we do this, how we establish the relationship, what is the method of establishing this, and what issues we work it out. So these are some of the issues we have to explore a little further. So I come up with the definition of population diplomacy. It's about influencing the population policy of other countries for the benefit of the population of one sort of country. So this is the history of population diplomacy. So, and when you look at now, let me explore what are the population concerns we are talking about. When you look at the population change, the population concern of any country, they broadly falls under three areas. 
that's about birth, death and migration. So these are the three variables which is influencing the size of the population or population change. So I am not getting immediately into that how this is related to the population, uh, the, 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 how it is changing with the diplomacy. And also let me try to classify these variables into immediate variables and distant variables. So immediate variables are the first set of migration. So distant variables are the one who is going to impact on the civilian variables. For example, what are the factors impacting for births? What are the factors influencing the early death or age death? And the early mortality, late mortality, this all influence special factors. And the third is migration. But I would like to emphasize the migration factor is more carefully. If you look at carefully, in the recent history, Bangladesh used to receive about 50 billion dollars of ODA, overseas development assistance. But now, if you look at the recent history, about 15 billion dollars is the limited sort of the migrant population of Bangladesh. So that means the migration is linked with a significant financial gain for Bangladesh. So this itself is an important issue that is has to be looked from a different point of view. And particularly, it should be elevated into the realm of diplomacy. Uh, so, this is again my, the point I want to emphasize. When you look at the population growth rate in Bangladesh, it's now it stands for 1.5%, and the graph is, is reasonably steady. But at the same time, when you look at the family size, it's not Bangladesh stabilized, or rather more or less stabilized in, in this area of. And some people will say that we have very really population growth, we are almost reaching to that, that stage. So, Bangladesh is still a growing population. But within that, migration, both international migration and internal migration, is a critical phenomenon. But I am not touching on the national internal migration. International migration can be elevated to the, to the area of uh, diplomacy. And so, let me just try to elaborate why the population should have to be a diplomatic concern. As a messenger, just a few minutes ago, international migration to greater Africa population change in Bangladesh. And also, promoting the migration should be part of a clear foreign policy. Now, we promote migration, but not necessarily part of a, 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 an established, thought out, well thought out uh, uh, international foreign policy. But there is this definitely part of the Bangladesh foreign policy. But this needs to be further clarified for this detailed time. And also, I am looking at foreign policies about uh, telling your stories. When you enter the general assembly, you can hear that the, the heads of states or the foreign states, the heads of the diplomatic corps, they actually what they are telling is they are telling a story. What great things they did in their own country, what great things they are doing in every country. So, the diplomacy is about telling your story. But what the developed countries are telling your story, their story is about point of stories of aggression, stories of uh, development aid. So, those stories doesn't have much space for stories of developing countries. So, my hypothesis, what I want to put forward today is that countries like Bangladesh, developing countries, they have to create their own alternative stories. That story should take into consideration the issues of how they deal with the challenges of population, how they deal with the challenges of uh, the critical issues of how we, the issues of uh, fertility, mortality, mobility, how we deal with uh, access to family planning, access to demographic studies, uh, status of women. So you can have to create stories for these issues. So this is another reason why we should look at the issue of population issues as a foreign policy issue. And, and also what we hear in the general assembly quite often is stories of South versus stories of North. If you look at the media, the foreign policy stories are more, most often the stories of the developed countries. So this is again another reason that why I emphasize that the need for looking at the developing countries. To create their own stories, you have to decide what are the stories in Bangladesh which deserve the international attention, or what stories you want to tell the world that the success in the area of production uh, and family size the production in the child mortality, the production of infant mortality. So these are the stories how far they succeed in putting it through the orientalities. So maybe this is one of the challenges for the Minister of Health. Are we willing to contribute towards the Bangladesh story for international consumption to the Bangladesh mission outside? What are the success stories? 
what are the populations with which you have to your ability to share with international uh, audience. And so I just want to briefly mention about what are the possible ways in which the population diplomacy could be practiced. We have indicated about eight domains in which this population policy could be practiced. Number one is about knowledge sharing. Bangladesh may be able to share extremely important knowledge and experience about how you reduce maternal mortality, how you reduce infant mortality. And also how you deal with the issue of the status of women and how you reduce the, the, the age in marriage. There are many significant improvements that are taking place. So sharing this knowledge, how you really in your own countries, how you work with the religious students, how you work with the community level, and how you expand the service delivery. See, this all part of the services or experience and knowledge that we can share with other countries. And also, you could contribute to other countries about capacity building on the senior location to look at policy making. And to come and see what our government is dealing with issues so of, for example, what are the minimum package of family plan services, or how Bangladesh is this kind of actually medicines, and how Bangladesh is reducing, keeping the, the cost of manufacturing of medicine and air to a very minimum level. This all, these are some of the issues which is what's advocating for experience and the benefit of other countries. And the third is about technology and technology transfer. This is probably both ways. Bangladesh may be able to learn from other developed countries about what technology, what technology innovations you may be able to emulate from other developed countries in the area of health, in the area of diagnostic technology. And I'm also talking about this exporting of pharmaceutical to other countries. So there is much room for further expansion of commodities of family planning, commodities of um, healthcare commodity, and also diagnostic technology, even, even the manufacturing of the pharmaceutical itself. And the third is about shaping the reflective of commodity market and the real institutions. <coughs> Those are familiar with the, uh, the medical commodity, particularly in the case of it. And I will give an example of uh, the power of oil schemes. Uh, China is manufacturing, European Union is manufacturing, some other countries also manufacturing. But the United States, if you buy it, the value costs about $1,000. Whereas if you buy a Chinese product, it's about $100. But at the same time, many other developing countries may not buy the Chinese because the issue of regulatory, lack of the proper regulatory mechanism which can guarantee the quality of the products coming from China. So the developing countries working together to influence impacts or, or strengthening the regulatory institutions is another area of diplomatic initiative. There is not a penalty for that. And also shape the quality of commodities and medicines and vaccines. We know that in some countries they, they pool their resources and procure vaccination. And now we talk about Ebola virus. And maybe Ebola virus comes to the market, what is the cost of the vaccine we don't But there are possibilities of few developed countries, developed countries who put their resources to them procure. But that can be structured away to a diplomatic entity. You may come out with a diplomatic framework to gather about four or five countries together and build for a for and relieve the cost of the vaccines. And just this an example about vaccine. And also the next is about the policy and policy. And probably Bangladesh could look at the possibility of how to integrate population policies into the, the foreign policy. And so right now I'm, my understanding is that there is no written population policy which has got ingrained into the foreign policy. So probably I would request um, the, the senior locations and not the minister to look at the possibility of what the population is to be part of the Bangladesh foreign policy. So maybe a serious kind of discussion debate is required to test what stories you want to highlight internationally and what data and evidence, what test practices you have. So this is what they get. And I am not aware of any content or a written policy on promoting population issues through foreign policy. Maybe it is an opportunity for the others to take leadership in that area. So these are some of the opportunities we can explore further. And the third is about partnership and resource mobilization. And we know that uh, now World Bank and also now the Asian Development Bank, the new, the Greek Bank is coming up. On this bank, the social organization on population issues also require voting. This is not based on the United Purpose to receive money. It's also depends on the voting for the, the share of the, the, the bank. So, probably one of the common positions many countries can take is that certain population policy issues, there should not be any serious condition. Any country should be the what do you call it? The lack of tradition have a fixed set of for essential 
races, forest enterprise. So these are the issues of partnership between different countries to reach here the resource organizations at the various international institutions and international government. And again, as I mentioned earlier, population diplomacy should be an official position and return part of the the world policy. And the third is the last one is about number seven. There is a joint effort in monitoring and accountability. And foreign policy is also about telling us stories about accountability. And again, I go back and introduce the idea of the issue of uh, diplomacy. Diplomacy is also about telling the world that we are also a responsible country, we are also a democratic country, we are also a liberal country. So, Bangladesh as a country takes responsible citizenship in the global citizenship as a globally responsible country. So, those messages you put it across to create your devices, messages of how we deal with our population issues, how we respond to the challenges of the population on this country. So, actually, it's important that a global accountability, accountability mechanism also to be expressed for the issue of uh, population diplomacy and the foreign policy. And in conclusion, and uh, my request to the honor minister and also the senior officials is that Bangladesh may consider population issues as part of the official diplomacy and there is, there is room for it. And we have my question that population policy is there is room for it. And my submission is that there is room for it. And also, we, we, we hear that Bangladesh is in hand with thousand stories. And how Bangladesh is dealing with the population is also should be part of the story. Thank you very much.